master of the sun Memories falling on concrete Right, okay, welcome back. Now time to paint the rims. Uh, a couple of jobs to do first of all. I've got to clean out the threads in which the bolts go for the discs. They've got to be cleaned out. Airline to clean out any grit that's in there. I'm going to run a tap in and out and just make sure they're absolutely smooth and ready for the new bolts. I'm going to put new disc bolts all round because you just do. The other thing is this face onto which the disc mates or connects, that must not be painted. That, that face on there must be bare alloy purely because a layer of paint isn't necessarily, because these are machined smooth and flat. Obviously they're flat in with the rest of the wheel. So if you put a layer of paint on there, it can throw out the angle of the disc and they can vibrate or oscillate so they mustn't go on top of paint. If you ever get your wheels painted or powder coated, make sure they don't paint these faces here. They must be bare alloy absolutely every time. So I'm going to do that, make sure that everything's ready to paint and then they've got to be blown off, get all the dust off them. I'm wearing gloves today because this is a slightly rough surface and I don't want it to pick up any skin grease from my hands. I don't want to have to degrease them later on because they are bone dry, completely grease free. I've just got to blow the dust off and then they're ready to paint. Simple as that. Right. Alright, that's enough talk, let's get on with it. Welcome back. There we go, right, ready to paint. It's gonna be one more blow off of dust everywhere. Let everything settle for about 10 minutes. Temperature's just coming back up to about 24 degrees now because I've let the door for a while to blow the dust out. And then once everything's set, we'll come back in here in about a quarter of an hour and then everything will be nice and set. I can start laying the paint. About three to four coats is all it needs. Right, wish me luck. Come back in a few minutes and start painting.
Oh, there we are. Okay. Five hours later, roughly. That's it. Very happy with the results. Indeed. Very happy. In fact, better than I thought, because the grainy finish of the wheels when they came back from the blasters, I thought they were going to end up being quite a grainy finish of themselves. A little bit like some factory wheels are, but no, not at all. They've come out really, really well. I was able to put a lot of this paint on, as I said, four wet coats instead of the usual six that you might do with rattle cam paint because this stuff's a lot thicker you can lay it on a little bit thicker which means it floats out so you get a better finish and in that sense that'll probably take now i reckon at least 48 hours before i want to touch it or put a fingerprint near it on top of that it's at least a week the tire guy said don't bring them back for at least a week let that paint dry completely before we start muscling tires on them so i'm going to double that to two weeks because I really don't want any marks or disasters later on. There's no need to worry. Of course, it gives me another week to save up for the back tire. Which brings me to the tires. Very quickly, the front tire I'm going to reuse because it's a Michelin Pilot Power 2CT. Good tire, nice sports bike tire, and it was already fitted. Its date stamp says June 2015, so it's not an old tire. It's only two and a half years old, perfectly reusable. I'm going to use that again. And because the rear tire on this was a 180, They've gone down to a 180, it's a six inch rim, you can, have a, you can have a 190 on that, in fact you can even put 200 on it. But I'm going to put the, the proper, correct, original factory 190 section tyre on the rear and also it was a mismatched tyre. Anyway, it wasn't the same, I want to put another Michelin Pilot Power on the rear. So I've ordered that, that will be in, in about four or five days, it's coming to the tyre guy and they'll take it back and replace them both. Once that's done, then it's bearings replaced brand new discs on there and new bolts as well. So everything back to normal. I've masked everything off there. So all those faces are completely bare metal underneath there. And once that's dried, I'll blade them off. So everything is completely clean and ready to be refitted. Now, once the wheels are back together and the, the sprocket carrying everything, I'll put the new sprocket on the carrier, put everything back together, new cush drives, new bearings, new discs, new bolts, the whole lot all renewed. The only thing that's original is the castings. And I'm really happy with that. They'll be great back on. In the meantime, between waiting for that paint to dry, I'm going to take the swing arm out. That's the next job. So the swing arm itself is a little bit of a bun fight getting the bike suspended without the swing arm because I'm using it at the minute to hold the back of the bike up. So that's a little bit of fun to come in the next video. Once the back swing arm's out, once the swing arm's out, I'm going to rip all the paint off it using the fleece, uh, the old sanding fleece on the grinder. Get all that back, all the nasty paint off that, get it painted and a little bit more of this stuff, which I think is a great way to paint the swing arm as well because it will completely match the wheels and the initial front half of the frame will be painted with that too and there's a method of painting a frame with the engine still in. I'm not taking the engine out, it's not necessary. I'll show you how to do that. It's a really simple way to do it using a sheet. Basically you tuck a sheet around the engine all the way in and you, it makes a really nice job when it's done. I've done it a few times and it comes out really well. So I'm going to paint all the frame and swing arms set in black to match these wheels which will give a uniformity and then hopefully once the back end all goes back in and the wheels go in, I'm ready to call Mackie for the paint. Pretty straightforward. But there is a little bit more to do. Like I said, that swing arm in the back end, I've got a new shot going in, new swing arm bushes, which I think is essential, and a few little videos to come. So there'll be some good stuff to come for the mechanical and servicing playlists, stuff like replacing the swing arm bushes. That will be a quite a big video, a little bit like the last wheel bearing video. When I do these wheel bearings, I'm gonna do them differently than the way I did them before. I'm not gonna just smack them out with a hammer and a chisel like I did with hammer and drift. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna pull them out with a proper puller this time, show you how to do that, and show you how to use a proper puller on bearings. And they're all home tools, we can buy all of them, so I've invested a few quid in one of those, that's all part 2018's things to come. And there's also a special method of replacing your swing arm bushes, you cannot hammer them in, because they're too fragile, you'll just beat them to death and you'll ruin them, they cannot be hammered in, they have to be pressed in. And if you don't have a hydraulic press, which I don't, then you can give, use a bit of initiative and ingenuity with some threaded bar nuts and sockets and I'll show you to do that when the time comes. So there's some cool videos coming up with this cycle part stuff and it is going faster, way faster than I imagined. Honestly, once they're back together, once the swing arm's back in with a new shock absorber and everything else, pretty much that's it. That's it. Get, Mac, get Mackie down here, do the paintwork and roll it out into the sunshine for an MOT. Honestly, it's closer than we think. There we go. I'll give you some close-up of what it looks like. Thank you for watching. Take it easy. Right safe. And I'll leave you with a time-lapse of the whole day. See you next time. Victim of your cards. I'm running in the dark. Avenger into nothing. Gone into the night.
sun